So I'd like to call this board meeting to order. Go rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Court, please call the roll. Trustee Bowden? Here. Trustee Hudson? Here. Trustee Jones? Here. Trustee Maretka? Here. Trustee Sluice? Trustee Sterba? Here. All right, public comments. Okay, moving on to the consent agenda, we have minutes from our January 23rd regular village board meeting. Uh, we have payroll accounts payable, the payroll for the pay period ending 1-27-2023 for $73,778.89 and for the pay period ending 2-10-23 for $72,332.51. Accounts payable, we have general fund 66,627.36, the motor fuel tax fund of 12, 1,222, and the business development district fund of 27,862.50 for a grand total of 95,711.86. There's also a raffle license for the Will County 4-H Youth Foundation, and we have a resignation letter from a part-time police officer, Robert Hill. Are there any Items on the consent agenda, any that trustees like to take off of there? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Moved by Trustee Jones, second by Trustee Hudson. Trustee Bowden? Present. Trustee Hudson? Yes. Trustee Jones? Yes. Trustee Marepka? Yes. Trustee Sturba? Yep. All right. <clears throat> Committee reports. Um, why don't you start off, Troy? Um, for the Railroad Street project, we heard today that the lighting controller cabinet is uh, almost complete and is supposed to be delivered next week. So we're going to try to get the polls laid out this week and the whole thing is going to start next week. Um, we're waiting for an official schedule, but that's what they're telling us today. Okay. Um, that's it? That's it. Okay. Uh, Chief, you got a report? No, sir. Okay. And uh, let's see, uh, admin, anything? Um, I just wanted to give you an overview of the building committee meeting that we had recently uh, regarding trailers. Uh, Julie's not here, she's the chairwoman of that uh, committee. So what I, we, we had a lot of robust discussion, so I just wanted to make sure we caught everything that we had talked about that night. Nick was there too, so he, he can, um, you know, chime in if he wants, but I, I had the draft minutes um, done for you so you can kind of see what exactly was talked about. But if I could just summarize it, um, oh, Mike was there too. I think the, the group that was here for public comment had um, requests to maybe expand the definition of recreational vehicles. So um, that maybe, so right now, um, recreational <coughs> vehicles are allowed you know, to be parked in, you know, on a, on a hard surface um, on res in residential neighborhoods. So there's certain types of trailers that are not. So um, we had sent out some letters to people so um, to, to kind of make them more aware because we've had a few complaints. We were trying to be a little bit more proactive. And um, that's where that came up and Mayor assigned it to building committee. So we're still kind of looking at it from a staff perspective and seeing if there's and working with, with uh, the police department to see if there's like some definitions in the Illinois Vehicle Code that we can maybe um, update our code with so that it's a little bit more um, definitive what a recreational vehicle is. Sometimes you know people are using what might be more of a utility trailer for some recreational things. So we want to try to you know accommodate as much as we possibly can with keeping that aesthetics of the community. So. We just wanted to give you a quick update, and um, we didn't get into commercial vehicles as much. We're kind of focusing on, on the recreational side, so we'll uh, keep it as a work in progress. And if I, if you guys want to add anything that I forgot, okay. that's it. Okay. <coughs> um, let's see. I don't see Angie's not here for Aqua. Uh, Bob's not here for Public Works. I think that about covers it then. Um, 
as far as my comments go, uh, first of all, village stickers are due on the uh, on Wednesday, the 15th. Uh, after that date, uh, there will be uh, a late fee for that. Uh, an update on the budget. Uh, so you all should uh, have a copy of the uh, draft budget uh, that was just printed out today. So. Uh, Amy and Anne Marie and myself have been kind of trying to go over that, come up with something uh, that you all can look at. Uh, there's going to be an AOC meeting next Tuesday, right, I believe. The 21st. 21st. Bye. So uh, we'll uh, kind of go over that. Um, so this budget is in a little different format than in years past. I think it's a little more uh, readable. Um, there are some. Uh, difference in, in, in how uh, things are categorized so when you look at kind of what last year was budgeted and this year if there's a big difference there's usually a reason for that something got categorized into a different category but those are all good questions uh, to have for Anne Marie uh, when we have that meeting next week um, we did not put in the downtown phase two into next year because after talking to Troy and with uh, um, an upland design we think that um, it'd be better off if we waited on that project till uh, 2024 um, just because uh, we don't want to get started late in the year and you know, it was okay with the railroad street <coughs> parking lot but um, you know, we don't want to leave businesses hanging all winter, so we want to make sure it gets all done in one construction season. So, if you're wondering about that, uh, why that's not in there, that's that's the reason. Um, but yeah, look it over. Like I said, it, I think it's a little more uh, readable, and uh, there's the actual budget, and then the last few pages of it are, is a breakdown of each department so if you have questions kind of refer back to those breakdowns but uh, uh, Anne Marie will go over it all with us uh, at the AOC meeting and so any trustees are obviously welcome to come to that and um, so yeah I think it's a we're pretty close to actually having a balanced budget which you know we haven't really had um, in a long time so it's uh, it's nice to see um, Moving on, uh, as I said, we talked a little bit about the downtown. We had a meeting with Upland and Robinson uh, just uh, last week. Um, I hope to have, so we're going to have another meeting at the end of March, and then uh, we also are going to have a downtown uh, ad hoc committee uh, meeting just to kind of discuss a few items uh, that uh, the engineers in Upland were asking about. but. Uh, that, such as you know whether we want to go with pavers or concrete or whatever for the sidewalk. So look for that. Uh, the administrator and I had a uh, we're, we're invited to a meeting with Congresswoman uh, Kelly today. So that was uh, informative. We met with some other mayors from the South Suburban area and a congresswoman and a congressman from uh, Ohio. They're kind of doing an exchange. You know, she's a Democrat and he's a Republican, so they're, you know, they, it's kind of a bipartisan exchange. So it was nice to see, you know, you hear on the news all the time how they can't get anything done and don't talk to each other, but um, they obviously work well together and they said, you know, most issues there is bipartisan agreement on most things. It's just, you know, that doesn't sell newspapers or cable news, so they concentrate on the stuff that people argue about. So. Um, and they both said they both have crazy people in their parties that, you know, nobody likes, <laughs> but they get the press, so they, you know, so, anyway, um, so that went well. Uh, let's see, I think that's about it. Uh, we don't have any old business. Moving on to new business. Uh, resolution accepting bid for construction of road improvements on 88th Avenue, Wilmington, Piatone Road, and I-57 exit ramp. Uh, this would be resolution 23-R-02. Uh, we got really good news last week when we opened the bids for this, uh, and uh, I'll turn it over to Troy to explain. Uh, bids were open on February 2nd. Four bids were received uh, from contractors that we expected to bid. 
Um, the prices came in lower than expected, which are not as low as they used to be, but definitely lower than when they were very high last year. So that is very good news. Um, the low bidder was deconstruction, and their, their bid was approximately 23% under our estimate. So um, they're a qualified bidder, and we recommend approving or uh, awarding the contract to <coughs> deconstruction since they're low. And so I asked Troy about, you know, like I said, they've never worked in Piatone, at least not recently, and so, um, but he said they're a good contractor. They, the reason why we haven't seen them is they usually work on bigger projects. Um, so he thinks they'll get the job done in a timely fashion, right? Right, yeah, they're a bigger um, contractor. They should be well equipped to do it. I think the other reason for the good prices was um, the timing of when it went up to bid in January instead of later in the year. And so that's kind of our plan for the downtown phase two to exactly. bid it out January next year. So, mm -hmm. um, let's see what else we want to talk. So the idea is to get it approve the bid, um, and then that'll be you know hopefully ready to go when you can work on the IDOT permit forms with the contractor, get right. those approved, and hopefully ready to go in March or April. Great. Any other questions? Motion to approve it. Okay. Construction. Is there a second? Second. Moved by Trustee Marefka, second by Trustee Jones. This will be resolution 23-R-02. Trustee Bowden? Yes. Trustee Hudson? Yes. Trustee Jones? Yes. Trustee Marefka? Yes. Trustee Sturba? Yes. Thank you. Uh, so <coughs> There is, uh, obviously there was a, uh, a difference between, I said it was 23% less, um, uh, so obviously there's always contingencies and stuff, but there's, we've been talking with Bond Council about, you know, what we can do with the extra money that we bonded, and so um, we're going to use some of that to make our interest payments, uh, you know, for the first year or two that was going to come out of the general fund. Uh, and then we also found out that we could reimburse uh, the general fund for expenses that we paid for engineering on this project. So um, that'll help the uh, you know uh, our general fund as well. So so that was good good news all the way around. All right, next item F uh, wine bar business proposal at Lush Vine. So uh, Lauren, if you want to come up and introduce yourself and. I'm Lauren Stauffenberg, and I'm looking to open a wine bar in Pietro. So, I know you're probably all thinking, not another bar. <laughs> but we're not just any other bar. Um, we attract a completely different clientele than a, your average bar. Um, who are looking for more of a different experience. Um, so, the lack of a local wine bar in Pietro is driving away business that could be retained or drawn into our beautiful town. So our solution is the vastly growing popularity of wine bars is the reason we emphasize our, differ our difference from a regular bar. We know our clientele is interested in the unique experience that we offer. This is an opportunity for us to not only keep business in Piatone, but draw in and attract from all over. Um, in addition to this, we would have the ability to create new job opportunities for the Piatone community. Um, in regards to target market and marketing strategy, we're blessed in the sense that we um, have a target market that's very vast. So we cater to everyone 21 to 101, anyone with an appreciation for wine and an experience to remember. Our marketing strategy is aggressive. So being a new business in general, you have to get out there and let, you, let everyone know who you are and what you're about. Um, so in regards to that, we would be using many different means of marketing, including social media, print ads, word of mouth events, and potentially radio advertising. We plan to analyze current marketing strategies, see what's most effective, be on the lookout for new techniques, and adjust accordingly. In regards to funding, we have multiple sources available to fund the building and credit to cover anything that's unaccounted for. The offerings we would be um, providing so we would offer a wide range of wines, from your classic Merlots and Moscatos to more adventurous wines like Watermelon and Raspberry Truffle. In addition to wines, we would offer a selection of craft beers. 
food options um, available would be shareable items. And that's to encompass that um, togetherness feeling. Um, we want our clients to come in and feel connected and together when they're there. We plan to periodically host events uh, such as live music and potentially dueling pianos. Our location would also have the ability to host private events such as networking meetings and bridal showers by request and upon availability. Our next slide is going to be a sneak peek at the menu. So most of these items are pretty locked in. Um, the drink varieties, I do have a couple other items that aren't on here um, that I think would be really neat to get on there. So if you take a minute, you can look at that and see what's up there um, and see kind of the variety we're going to offer. Remodeling. So I know Piatone is in the middle of kind of giving the town a fresh new look. So given the opportunity to do business here, we'd be committed to joining into those efforts. Um, some things we'd be looking to do is brighten up the exterior of the building we're looking to purchase um, and update the front door and that just makes it more inviting and make people more wanting to come into to our business. Um, we'd like to add in open air windows to the front of the building, um, allowing us to open them up when the weather permits. If you go downtown to Chicago, a lot of those um, bars and businesses down there have the, the ability to open those windows to give you a good feeling of being outside without being outside. Um, creating a back patio seating area to allow guests the options to sit inside or outside. Um, the building we're looking at doesn't have a huge back, um, back area, but I think there's potential to add um, back patio seating back there. And then modernizing the interior. The hours of operation kind of aligning with our um, theme of not being a regular bar. Um, Monday through Thursday would be 11 a.m. through 8 p.m., so not staying open super late. Um, Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., and closed on Sunday. There is a potential um, for Sundays to have those networking events and um, private events available. Any questions? <laughs> is this your first venue? Um, this would be my first wine bar, yes. My husband owns, um, he's an independent Amsoil dealer, so we do have that. Um, and then I also have a small online boutique. What's your background? Um, right now it's finance. Yes. What building are you looking to purchase? 113 North 2nd Street. Okay, so you'll be right up here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes. Anything else? Any idea how much you're planning on putting into the building? Um, not a set number. Um, I know me and my husband talked about first starting with the apartments. Um, the upstairs needs some TLC and so does kind of the entryway going up. Um, so that would be our first focus, is to make that um, updated, presentable, and get that top apartment rented. Um, but I'm thinking the downstairs, probably at least $75,000 we would be putting into the building. Between the door and the windows and the other updates? That would be extra. So oh, maybe okay. maybe 100 to encompass all of that. You want to take a look at the roof on that building? <laughs> yes. Okay. We haven't done inspections yet. I kind of wanted to get in here and feel out if it was a potential to get in here um, before we moved further at all with the building. I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Kind of an upscale type thing that we're looking for. Yeah, Go ahead. Sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Are you thinking of, of video gaming at all? We've thought about it. We've kind of tossed around the idea. Um, mm -hmm. I think it, it could be a good idea, but in the sense it could also drive away some of that clientele. So I think when you go to a you know an upper scale wine bar, you don't really want to hear the noise of the, the gaming machines. <laughs> so okay. where's your closest competitor? Um, closest is Moni, um, then Bourbon A, then Kankakee. But I would say Kankakee is probably our biggest competitor. There's just a real small one that just opened in Wilmington, downtown Wilmington. Okay. <coughs> Yeah, so I think uh, you know, the board is you know, positive on this, so good luck and hope to see you back here soon with some plans for the building and the business registration, okay? All right. Liquor license. Yeah, yes. liquor license. <laughs> liquor license. <laughs> Don't forget that. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, item G, uh, squad car replacement evaluation. So uh, in your packet, uh, the, the chief put together a nice proposal of what we have right now as far as uh, uh, cars 
for the police department and kind of what he's looking for. So, uh, Chief, if you want to make a presentation at all? Or? Sure. Uh, everybody's got the packets. Uh, right now we have we have some squad cars that are running. They're running 24-7. We have the three SUVs that the patrol, the patrol division is using constantly. We have the, the two small four Tauruses, which is what the previous chief drove. Uh, I, I'm not driving it because I'm, I'm honestly just too big to fit, fit in that small car. Uh, it, it just doesn't work. The, they have a lot of miles. I started looking at through some of the repair costs. I mean, uh, as you see, the, what, what we we're supposed to be at, you know, just over 100,000 miles. We have one that's now up to 160,000 miles. Rear, repair costs are, are more. So uh, that's being driven every day uh, by by two shifts. So in, in the we have some federal asset forfeiture money. Uh, it was when we had a canine, and when the canine was doing federal asset money work, it was bringing money in. Uh, right now we we have nothing that's bringing federal asset forfeiture in. We do we do have state forfeiture money that that we can bring in, but nothing federal. We don't have anybody in a task force. We don't have a dog working on a task force. So I would uh, close close that account out, which would pay for the majority of the of the initial vehicle. Uh, and then, um, then there'd be two more vehicles um, that would need to be funded. And I am, look, I am working on additional funding. It takes quite a while before before the cars cars come in. They, they have been ordered. We are not, uh, not obligated to accept them. But the order was placed because it could take up to a year for a car. Actually, uh, Bill, Bill placed them about eight, nine months ago, maybe even a year ago. Uh, I was talking to the Ford dealer here in town. So I did uh, go to several different uh, Ford dealers. Uh, Terry's here in town was by far the lowest. No, right now, whatever the whatever the price is, is what the price is. Nobody's doing anything. And as you see, Terry's did take quite a discount for for us here in Piatone. So that's, uh, it's nice that you can go place in your town and actually buy vehicles for the best price. So if there's any, if there's any other specific questions on that? So, just so the trustees are, are clear, so they're, uh, we're considering buying a, the, the F-150 truck, that would be your uh, vehicle, correct. correct? And is that on order, or do they have that? It's, sit it's sitting on the lot. They have that? Yes. Yeah. So, if, if, if it's approved, it can be picked up whatever, the, whatever we take the money out of that account. <clears throat> okay. And then, you're also recommending then, in the next year's budget, um, two squad cars, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, so I talked to the chief about possibly looking into leasing. I know that hasn't really been done here too much, but um, you know, to try to get our uh, sometimes it's easier if you're on a lease, you kind of know exactly how much you're paying every year um, instead of kind of going up and down and, and buying a you know a car. So um, he's going to be looking into that, but uh, um, what do we do? We need to approve something tonight, then. Well, we've got an, it's, it's an action item, and I think it's just you know a lot of it was we wanted to look, kind of inform you about the um, inventory and give you kind of the bigger picture and kind of start to plan for the future. So, if you want to approve the proposal, but you know we can tweak it if leasing comes in under budget. Right. The only thing with leasing that I don't like is that you're only allowed so many miles per the lease agreement, mm -hmm. and if we go over, then we're paying more money into it. Right. And if they're putting a lot of miles on during those however many years, two, three years that we're leasing it, we could potentially be paying more money. Right. Do they have a program for police cars and stuff like that on the lease? Uh, uh, Chief was going to look. Ford, I did. I've looked into it. Ford used to have have a lease program. That's how most municipalities bought them. Uh, and then at the end of the lease, you bought them for a dollar, and then, and then usually they went to a, a, you know the department inspectors or something like that. Before it no longer has that program, so the only way for us to do it would not not really a lease, but it'd be a a, fin a finance company where you can make quarterly or or once a year payments uh, over whatever whatever the term is. Okay. So some of the car rental places have fleet programs. I've seen them at conferences. So. Maybe we can check that. Um, see what comes so the, the only one I'm re requesting right now is really is really the that I, I think we need to take action is the truck, and then we, we still have time before the other one can come in here. Like like I said, they're ordered for us, but Ford even told us 
don't worry if you don't want them, we will sell them to somebody else. Right, so. Okay. You can take immediate delivery on the car they've got? Yes. Is there, so, is there any uh, grant money out there for these kind of purchases? No, I've I, I, I been looking. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> Doesn't say that to say that there won't be before the cars come in. So, so I guess um, kind of what we want to prove today then would be to um, for this the pickup truck that's on the lot um, and uh, in total with the lighting package and everything in uh, on here it would cost fifty five thousand seven forty three. Um, we have uh, 46456 in a, uh, what he was talking about, the federal seized fund. So uh, it would just be a payment from the general fund for 928753. So um, I think that's kind of what we're looking for <coughs> tonight, right? I mean, the rest of it is kind of just looking at the inventory and we'll discuss during the budget if, you know, we're able to fit those two purchase, you know, purchase of two more cars next year. See any motion for that? Yep. Yeah. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, moved by Trustee Bowden, second by Trustee Jones to uh, accept this report on the squad car replacement evaluation and approve uh, the funds to purchase the uh, Ford F-150. Trustee Bowden? Yes. Trustee Hudson? Yes. Trustee Jones? Yes. Trustee Marepka? Yes. Trustee Sterba? Yes. All right, item H, uh, motion to approve the village administrator as principal authority on the account for Illinois funds, INB and EPAY. So um, we've always used this Illinois funds, uh, but the names that are approved to you know make changes on the account for all people who are not here anymore so it's been kind of we've been trying to correct that so that we can use this um, to actually accept payments uh, on our website so things like village stickers or um, you know building permits things like that we'll be able to start building that out so that we can kind of come into the 21st century and allow <laughs> e-payments so but we we got to right now we don't we really don't have um, the authority to do that because nobody the we, we don't have the administration set in there correctly so no and they won't yeah. just change it to anybody they need your approval to assign a person so did I cover that mm -hmm. okay I'll we'll make a motion to approve okay for a second Second. Moved by Trustee Hudson, second by Trustee Murakai. Trustee Bowden? Yes. Trustee Hudson? Yes. Trustee Jones? Yes. Trustee Murakai? Yes. Trustee Sterba? Yes. All right. Questions of the press? No. Um, I just wanted to welcome all the scouts here tonight. It's great to see you guys uh, here. Um, you guys are all working on your citizenship and the community badge, I take it. So <laughs> if I can help you out at all, just let me know. Uh, so it's great to see such a good crowd. Uh, Chief, I think you had some correspondence uh, to read. Yes. So I received uh, a letter from uh, Terry Lemming. He is the Chief of Police for the Village of Beecher. Uh, so I'd, I'd just like to read it real quick. Uh, Dear Chief DeMick, as you know, we had a shooting incident. This is in Beecher. We had a shooting incident on January 30th, 2023, which left a Beecher resident fighting for his life. Because we are a small department with limited resources, we contacted the Will Grundy Major Crimes Task Force and eight officers responded to assist led by the task force commander from Piatone, Gary Miller. Gary immediately deployed the task force and beach officers in handling this important time sensitive task. Almost all work that needed to be done was completed on January 30th. I was present on January 30th and attributed the $5 million arrest warrant for the offender and the fine work completed to the leadership of Gary Miller. In today's world, the public is often quick to criticize police and reluctant to, pr to praise when warranted. It is in this context that I would like to acknowledge the fine work of your detective, Gary Miller. Please convey my thanks to Gary on a job well done. Perfect. Very nice. Great. Uh, 
And while we're handing out compliments, I want to compliment uh, the chief and the police department. You know, we had another incident of a, you know, suspected somebody was going to bring a gun into school, and um, you know, you, you, obviously we just can't be too careful with those kind of things. It turned out to be, you know, just kind of a, you know, social media thing, just a hoax. But um, I know chief stayed up all night, uh, you know, trying to straighten things out and uh, got a resolution, and so. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously we just can't be uh, too cavalier about that stuff, even though it happens a lot. But you know, you just don't want to ever that be real. So um, you've got to take all that stuff seriously. So thanks, Chief, for your work on that. Thank you. All right. Any other correspondence, communication, petitions? Oh, how did the um, blood drive go? It was almost full, so I think we only had three or four spots left. How was it when you were there? They, they tricked me into power red. <laughs> oh! I was just supposed to give regular blood. It's because I canceled then they, mine. Then they took all kinds of blood. And then I was worried because I was going on calls. I'm like, I'm short blood. <laughs> so but yeah, it was, really it was full when I was there. Great. Good. Yeah. Good. All right. No other business? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Uh, Moved by Trustee um, Rucka, second by Trustee uh, Sturba. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you.